arriving in Havana, the first thing I recommend you do is take a classic car tour of this vibrant city. The tour company collected me in the morning from the Casa Particulares. My tour guide Angel gave me a whirlwind tour of the city which lasted about 6 hours and cost 130 cook for two people. We first went to the Christ of Havana statue and El Moro which gave a fantastic perspective of old Havana. The Malacan, which refers to the 8km roadway, sidewalk and sea well separating Havana from the ocean, is an iconic symbol of the city. Next stop was Hotel Nacional de Cuba, which is located on the seafront of the Vidado district. This is a national monument and considered a symbol of history, culture and Cuban identity. Since the 1930s, it attracted a large number of personalities such as Winston Churchill, Marlon Brando and Frank Sinatra to name a few. Havana recently celebrated its 500th anniversary since its founding. In the hotel grounds, there is a small museum on site that shares the story of the Cuban Missile Crisis. The museum is located in a system of underground tunnels that form a circle beneath the hotel's gardens. The Vidado district is more residential and is a neighbourhood that many habaneros and tourists choose to stay in as it is quieter than old Havana. Grand Hotel Manzana is located in the heart of Old Havana. It has a fantastic rooftop bar and a pool to relax in, which offers great views of the city and served one of the best mojitas I had in Cuba. Across from the Grand Hotel Manzana is El Florodita. This is a historic restaurant and cocktail bar which is famed for being the birthplace of the daiquiri and Ernest Hemingway's local drinking horn. Nowadays it is a busy tourist spot with an electric atmosphere which offers different flavoured daiquiris and live music. Plaza Vieja is one of the four main plazas in Old Havana. It is architecturally very beautiful and has many bars, restaurants and cafes which offer a terrace view. Here I visited Camera Obscura, which is an optical device that gives a 360 degree live image of Old Havana projected onto a screen inside the tower. It is open from 8.30am to 5.30pm daily and costs two cook per person. The rooftop here also gives you another chance to view the city. Just a short walk away is Plaza de Anmas, which is commonly filled with live music. For lunch, Angel recommended Kilometre Zero restaurant, which is located in central Havana. The live music here, which most restaurants in Havana have, was fantastic. The ropa vieja or shredded beef was some of the best I tried in Cuba. The cocktails here were also delicious and I highly recommend this place for lunch or dinner. Also, part of the tour was a visit to El Capitolio, which is an iconic building in Havana and is one of the most important landmarks of the city. It is often compared to the US Capitol building in Washington DC. Distances from Havana are officially measured from this building and the exact spot is marked in the centre of the main hall by a replica diamond. Plaza de San Francisco is a beautiful paved square which is dominated by the Basilica and Tower. This was my favourite square in Old Havana due to the colours and beautiful architecture. This is a statue of Antonio Gades, who was a famous Spanish flamenco dancer. The streets of Havana are full of colour, brimming with live music and locals inviting you in for a drink. Welcome to the Revolution Square, okay? So this is uh, the main plaza, the main square in the whole country. It doesn't mean it's the only one, of course, but it's very important because it's the meaning is about the Cuban Revolution. The tower over there is uh, over more than 100 meters high. It's uh, a biggest symbol of the Cuban Revolution. And from the air, the, the, the shape of the tower is like a star, the same in the Cuban flag. The same in the Cuban flag, which is meaning real independence and victory. And that guy is Camilo Cienfuegos, or well, that face represents Camilo Cienfuegos, which is, he was a Cuban, he was one of the, you know, 
like the right hand of Fidel Castro to start the revolution with Cuba against the Batista government <laughs> and over there Che Guevara. So that face is very famous around the world. Uh, the real name of Che Guevara was Ernesto Guevara de la Cerda. But everyone calls Che because he came from Argentina. In Argentina, it's a very typical expression between the locals to say, hey Che, hey Che. So Che means friend. So Che Guevara means friend Guevara. I'm pretty sure he used to talk with the Cubans or Fidel Castro or Raul or whatever. And he used to say all the time, hey Che, hey Che. So that's why they call Che Guevara. So this space right here is used for special occasions like the Mother's Day, the Mother's Day uh, when the president's in Cuba, when the Pope was in Cuba. So all the time. But the biggest thing in this place for tourists is that all those beautiful vintage cars over every day so in other countries maybe in the united states you need to go to the special days for a uh, car show in cuba in havana boom every day you see those beautiful cars all over around and this place is every day I've done my research on the best breakfast spots in all of Atlanta and this place, El Cafe, is by far the best place. Uh, the food here is really tasty, the coffee is amazing, it's on par with what we get in London um, and the service is amazing as well, definitely recommend coming here. Um, I also went to El Palato and Lodemonic and El Cafe is by far the best breakfast spot in um, Atlanta, Vega. I would definitely recommend coming here. Museo de la Revolución is located in Old Havana and is set in the former presidential palace. Entrance costs 8 cook and all bags have to be left in the cloakroom upon entry. The museum focuses on the events leading up to, during and immediately after the Cuban Revolution, which is told in English and Spanish. There are also grand exhibit-free rooms which were once used for banquets and as the presidential office. Outside, at the front of the museum, is a fragment of the city wall, as well as a tank used by Castro in the Bay of Pigs battle. At the rear of the museum, there are other replica vehicles associated with the revolution, including a boat, planes, rockets, and an old postal van that was used as a getaway car in the 1957 attack. San Jose Artisans Market is located in the southern part of Old Havana, which is a short taxi ride away. The market resides in a large warehouse which features the work of hundreds of Cuban artists. It is full of paintings, handmade jewellery and other souvenirs. You do however find the same art in most stores so don't feel afraid to haggle. Another recommended place to eat is O'Reilly 304. It is a trendy bar restaurant in Old Havana which specialises in gin. It is the perfect place to share tapas plates with a few cocktails. I made my way to La Guarida, which is the city's most legendary restaurant that has a grand entrance of a marble staircase up two flights of stairs. It was used as a location in the Oscar-nominated movie Fresa y Chocolat. It has fantastic views from the rooftop bar, which is popular with tourists. The restaurant serves both Cuban classics as well as contemporary dishes. 
It has three rooms which have a cosy atmosphere with soft lights and there is also alfresco dining. The food here is more expensive compared to most restaurants in Havana. To avoid disappointment, I would recommend you book a table at least two weeks in advance. It is in a part of town with limited street lighting, so I would suggest you get a taxi when visiting here in the evening. On the way to Hotel Inglaterra, I stumbled across the Social Canera Club, which was packed full of locals dancing and drinking the night away. It is a great place to practice salsa and dance with the locals. It had an electric atmosphere and everyone was very friendly. Entry cost one cook and drinks were relatively cheap. Hotel Inglaterra is a grand hotel located near the El Capitolio building. As soon as you exit the lift onto the rooftop, you are hit by the live band with a sea of tourists and locals dancing away. The atmosphere is lively and vibrant and another great place to practice your salsa. Havana 61 is a highly rated small restaurant in Old Havana. Unfortunately, I was unable to get a table as you need to book ahead. Luckily, I found Fiverr Screen Estratoria, which is a charming Italian restaurant nearby with outdoor seating and a great atmosphere. Hotel Paseo del Prado is a new hotel in Havana located along the Malecon. The 360 degree rooftop terrace views were fantastic and a perfect place to have a drink and watch the sunset. Fustalandia is an art installation created by Jose Fuster. He decorated his house and home neighbourhood with art, sculptures and mosaic tiles of every colour and description. Entrance is free and it is about a 20-30 minute drive from Old Havana. You can get a taxi to take you there and back for around 30 cook. The taxi will wait for you as you explore the artwork which takes about 30-40 to 40 minutes. La Bodeguita del Medio is another popular bar with tourists that serves mojitos. Ernest Hemingway is also known to favour the bar when he was in Havana. Calle Espiso is one of the most popular streets in Old Havana. There are several shops and restaurants along the street aimed at tourists. Cuba was fascinating and full of colour and the locals were so friendly. Check out my things to know about Cuba video for top tips. <laughs> Amigo